Today's presentation will focus on generating a timing information of a 1 pulse per second, 1 PPS signal from a software-defined radio decoding of a global navigation satellite system, GNSS, receiver, and most significantly the GNSS SDR free open source framework. So the outline of the presentation is as follows. We'll be interested in a software-defined radio implementation of GNSS receiver with software-defined radio aimed at uh, reducing at maximum the impact of uh, hardware limited to antenna, amplifier, frequency transposition, and all processing being performed at the software level using a general purpose uh, central processing unit. The objective is to process this data stream of complex numbers. We'll see later why uh, this uh, transposition will lead to complex numbers. And the reason we are interested in this software-defined radio implementation of GNSS receivers is to analyze the physical characteristics of the incoming uh, plane wave, most significantly for uh, spoofing and jamming cancellation using a null steering approach. So thanks to the software-defined radio processing, we have full control of the signal processing chain. And the objective will be to steer the local oscillator with the signal with information, time information received from GNSS receiver. Now, if we look at the output of GNSS SDR, and here we have added an additional information with the initial uh, offset, time offset between our local clock and the receiver, GNSS receiver clock, and here the frequency offset between our software defined radio for radio frequency front end and the GNSS uh, oscillator. We have all this information about uh, localization, uh, local time, and this virtual information about the characteristics of a local clock. And the question is, how can we materialize a hardware one PPS signal out of this uh, software uh, information uh, provided by GNSS SDR? So SDR reception is limited to a minimum hardware uh, where we have the antenna, the preamp, and the IQ detector, where we create uh, from a local oscillator two copies of uh, a signal in quadrature with incoming signal times cosine of a local oscillator and received signal times the sine of a local oscillator. And these two quantities being in quadrature will be naturally described as a complex number i plus jq, j squared equal minus 1. These IQ data are synchronously sampled by two dual-channel analog to digital converters. Uh, this is performed in the case of EHS Research B210 uh, software-defined radio receiver uh, with the uh, analog device AD9361 front-end with two coherent channels. The same oscillator is used to clock uh, the two receiver channels. An FPGA will take care of pre-processing this uh, fast data rate. This is typically a few mega sample per second. In the case of GPS, you would like the sampling rate to be wider than the data rate of 123 uh, megabit per second. And these being complex numbers, that's uh, 2.6 megahertz bandwidth. And typically, we will be using something like uh, 1.2 up to 2 mega sample per second, limited by the uh, general purpose central processing unit processing power. And out of uh, uh, this uh, central processing unit, CPU is running uh, the, the free open source software GNSS SDR, which will end up providing position, velocity, and time, the PVT solution. Notice that current uh, single board computers embedded boards, uh, such as the Raspberry Pi 4, provides enough computational power with its uh, quad-core 1.5 uh, gigahertz CPU uh, running in performance mode, uh, highest power consumption but fastest uh, CPU speed, so that embedded approach are feasible. So in our hardware implementation, we have this uh, B210 with its two inputs. Uh, we can introduce spoofing or jamming signals with known power, and these two inputs are connected to antennas illuminated by the genuine signal. So you can always run build route uh, to uh, generate the image uh, with new radio and GNSS SDR as described on this uh, website repository. So the challenge here is to materialize this one PPS. And the initial thought is how can we have a time information because all these data communication are asynchronous, whether USB free, whether gigabit Ethernet. We do not know how packets are formed. We do not know what is the latency between FPGA, general purpose CPU, and processing. GNSS SDR relies on GNU Radio. GNU Radio will transfer packets from one processing block to another. And here, all time information is lost. So the only information, the only time information that we are aware of is the sampling time of the analog to digital converter. And actually, GNU Radio will timestamp 
uh, all data that are collected by the ADC, uh, provided to the FPGA, and then asynchronously transferred to GNSS SDR and GNU Radio. So the only information, time information that we know of is here. And so if we wish to steer uh, a clock with the time information generated by GNSS SDR, it will not be the CPU clock that we can affect, but it will be the clock here clocking the A2D converter. And luckily enough, on the B210 uh, front end, it is the same clock that will be clocking uh, the FPGA. So we will implement a counter in the FPGA. This counter will count from 0 to FS minus 1 the sampling frequency and this will generate the one pulse per second if we steer this clock with an information of timing generated by GNSS SDR then we will lock this frequency on the frequency provided by the GPS constellation all characterization will be performed with uh, an HP 53 132A uh, time interval counter clocked by hydrogen maser, which has been characterized to be better than 10 to the minus 12 in accuracy. And depending on the objective uh, reference clock providing this uh, 10 megahertz reference clock, either on the hydrogen maser or leave it free running to uh, steer uh, the, the clock on uh, GNSS SDR output. Notice that the 10 megahertz input is multiplied by 4, so that the uh, time resolution is 25 nanoseconds per step. The reference 1PPS is provided by a uh, U-Blocks Neo M8P p receiver with its 1PPS output, hardware output. So this is if you just clock the FPGA with uh, the Roden Schwarz SMA100A OCXO and uh, you just leave it free running. This is the time interval between uh, the U-Blocks 1PPS uh, output and our 1PPS. So this was just to check that our implementation of a counter from 0 to FS minus 1 is working properly. And here we see over about uh, 200,000 seconds how uh, the Roden Schwarz SMA100A will uh, fluctuate. This is the objective of plus or minus 100 nanoseconds, which is the typical performance of a hardware uh, 1 PPS output. And here we have additionally removed the 11 uh, PPB drift from the Roden Schwarz OSIG, so offset with respect to the uh, GPS uh, frequency. So the output of controlling uh, this oscillator is to prevent this oscillation of the frequency output uh, to uh, reach beyond plus or minus 100 nanoseconds from the uh, genuine uh, 1 PPS output. So here is an example of a closed loop uh, measurement where uh, this time the SMA100A frequency is controlled with a PVT solution and we have two outputs, two possible outputs. We can ask GNSS SDR to provide a solution as a single solution or a, a precise position solution. So we see here that the red solution exhibits uh, weakest um, uh, fluctuations but even the single solution will have a peak-to-peak -peak fluctuation well below uh, the 100 nanoseconds. So here the sampling period is one chip rate or 20 milliseconds, which is the correlator output of the uh, GNSS receiver after uh, getting the navigation message. And the control loop is tunable from GNSS SDR and will here tune the uh, time output every 500 milliseconds, which is twice every uh, PPS uh, period. In this example here, we have selected the sampling frequency as an integer uh, fraction of 40 megahertz. If we forget such a selection scheme, then the, the actual frequency generated by the software defined radio front end will not be exactly the targeted frequency, which is the case, for example, if we select 1.023 megahertz. And this output will slowly drift because GNSS SDR believes that the front end is uh, acquiring data at a given FS, which is not actually implemented. And the output will slowly drift over time uh, because of this erroneous value. Even fractional integers such as 1.125 megahertz, which is is 320 over 9 or 40 megahertz is acceptable uh, as an acceptable solution. Now be aware that uh, initially due to uh, evolutive uh, configuration of GNSS SDR whose um, signal processing chain is a source uh, with a conditioner which feeds acquisition tracking telemetry. This conditioner outputs FS sample per second while acquisition tracking telemetry only outputs one uh, value every 20 milliseconds for each channel which now feeds the observable and uh, provides a PVT solution every uh, 20 milliseconds. This conditioner here allows for changing the type of data or changing the sampling rate and if we're not careful and we keep the conditioner with the same input and output uh, sampling frequency, then this last step uh, of a conditioner will miss one uh, sample every 2 to the 32. 
and this means that we have 1 over fs steps and in this case of 2 mega sample per second that's a 500 nanosecond step every 2 to the 32 over fs in this case that's uh, 2100 seconds that's nearly an hour so uh, the, the one sample drop every hour is due to the erroneous configuration of the conditioner so make sure that you configure this uh, conditioner as pass through if you don't want to have this drop at the sampling rate of 1.125 mega sample per second that would be one sample every hour that is dropped. So if we do this correction, then here is the output of the 1 PPS in a closed loop. Here we have the free running output that we saw earlier. This is uh, GNSSSDR versus the U-blocks. So because both are uh, controlled by the Global Navigation Satellite Constellation, they do not have any drift. And the uh, purple color here and the yellow one are 1 PPS output with respect to our local hydrogen maser, which exhibits a slight offset of uh, 10 to the minus 12. So this is the 100 nanosecond time offset with the observe uh, due to the hydrogen maser offset with respect to GNSS. In terms of Allen deviation, we start with a deviation of 10 to the minus 8 and we decay as 1 over tau, which is expected from uh, such a 1 PPS Allen deviation. Make sure when you do this to convert your time interval measurement uh, at y into uh, the uh, frequency interval and to convert this in a modified uh, Allen deviation. So all these computations are completed using uh, sigma theta by François Vernot and others uh, following the uh, precept uh, discussed in uh, Enrico Rubriola's work on uh, frequency stability in oscillators. So we get uh, performance out of GNSS-SDR implementation of 1PPS that are consistent with the uh, U-Blocks hardware 1PPS uh, with something like 10 to the minus 12 at 10,000 seconds. If we replace now the uh, SMA100A uh, OCXO uh, Rodin Schwartz with a TCXO, as would be expected from an embedded application, in this case we have a temperature control crystal oscillator clocking an AD9959 di uh, direct digital synthesizer, and in this case we have similar performance on the short term, and yet we still observe some long term fluctuation of the TCXO that still needs to be controlled by improving the, uh, the control loop. In this case, the 32-bit DDS will allow us to reach uh, 18 millihertz frequency resolution when clocking the, uh, uh, the uh, AD9959 with a 20 megahertz TCXO, which is close to the 10 millihertz resolution of the SMA100A synthesizer. Finally, the issue of the control loop initialization is a challenge when using the TCXO, which is very far from the targeted uh, frequency. So initially, the, the oscillator is free running. Uh, then after about 100 seconds, GNSSSDR will lock on the GPS constellation and provide a PVT solution. And what we do now is we observe for a few seconds the frequency drift so that we can initialize properly the DDS with value close to the targeted frequency and leave the control loop uh, running. So here you see that on the short term we have uh, far uh, better than uh, plus or minus 100 uh, nanosecond uh, time shift and by using this initial estimate of a frequency offset we avoid the huge uh, frequency oscillations that would be induced by the PI controller when starting too far from the targeted set point. So to conclude, uh, in this work, we are bridging the virtual output of uh, software-defined radio implementation of uh, GNSS-SDR uh, processing of uh, GPS signals by uh, implementing a 1PPS output. Only the A to D converter timestamp can provide some sort of time information in the processing chain, which is otherwise asynchronous. And uh, so we steer the clock controlling the A to D converter, which also happens to be controlling the FPGA. We demonstrate a 1PPS uh, frequency control uh, with 10 to the minus 8 at 1 second, uh, decreasing in 1 over 2 to reach 10 to the minus 12 at 10,000 seconds. And in this case, sample loss uh, in the A to D converter stream will hardly affect frequency control. However, sample loss will have a dramatic impact on the phase offset, and currently this timing information control, so the phase of the 1 PPS, is uh, under investigation. You can always uh, download uh, the, our fork of GNSS SDR implementing 1 PPS, assuming that you're controlling your B2 10 with an SMA 100A at this uh, repository and we acknowledge uh, the wonderful contribution of all the free open source software and gateway community the GNSS SDR offers have been uh, helpful with uh, fruitful discussion the new radio community on which GNSS SDR is relying ATUS Research uh, whose FPGA open source gateway allows us to implement uh, the 1PPS output
output and build route for running the uh, open source software on the Raspberry Pi. And with that, I thank you for your attention.